Hey, welcome back. Today we are talking about what I would do if I had to pare down my collection to 20 bottles. Now, this isn't just really keeping the nicest 20 bottles because the whole idea of this is I'm giving up, you know, collecting whiskey and I'm just going to really keep a smaller cabinet and it's only going to have space for 20 bottles. What would those 20 bottles be? So I can't just keep my 20 nicest because I got to keep restocking them over time. I'm not quitting whiskey completely. I'm just going to pare down my collection and I'm only going to have a collection of 20 bottles. Now there's a lot of people out there who are kind of in that position. Actually, somebody gave me the idea for this video because they were asking me what, what kind of, you know, they're thinking about paring down their collection to 20 bottles. And I was like, Hey, that's a great video idea. I'm going to steal it. So anyway, so today we're talking about the 20 bottles that I would have in my collection if I were to quit the channel and quit collecting whiskey and really just keep, say, 20 bottles that I liked of uh, bourbon, rye, whiskey, whatever. Uh, what 20 bottles would I keep in my house? Now, if you end up enjoying the video, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not. Now, thank you so much in advance to today's video sponsor, Original Grain. Original Grain is making some fine, fine timepieces. Now, this particular one is made with old whiskey barrels. So the wood inlay you see there is actually old whiskey barrels. They are, honestly, they feel great on the wrist. I really, really enjoy them. I've been working with the Original Grain for quite a while. Uh, they've been sponsoring for a while, and the reason is because I really believe in their product, and I really, really enjoy wearing their watches, even when I'm not filming. When Jamie and I go out on the town for a, a nice dinner out or something like that, or whatever the case may be, I usually am wearing an original grain, whether it be this one, I've got another one, which is made of uh, ammo crates. But uh, hey, we're coming up on the holidays, and if you have somebody that you think would love a quality timepiece like this from Original Grain, go to originalgrain.com slash row. They are having some amazing sales. Uh, they're, right now they're doing their pre-Black Friday sale and get a great timepiece for your loved one or friend. Thank you so much to Original Grain for sponsoring this episode. So because this is really kind of like, what would my 20 bottle collection look like? Some of these are just cocktail mixers. Some of these are really, really special bottles that even if I were to get out of bourbon like I am now, I still love these ones so much, I would probably try to put in the effort at some level or spend the money at some level to get a hold of some of these bottles. So here we go, ready, set, go. First up, Old Forester 100, my favorite cocktail mixer. I absolutely love it, it is delicious. Benchmark, full proof, coming in at 125 proof. Now, this one is awesome as well. I would use this in a mixer. I love, in the summer, putting this on a rock over, you know, actual, like a real piece of ice and letting it just kind of mix and, you know, letting that 125 kind of proof down as I sip it and a nice hot day. That's delicious to me. So I want that experience. I want to be able to have that flexibility of having something that's budget and everyday sipper type thing that is very, very affordable at like $25. Redwood Empire. This is the Lost Monarch. So this is the Burai. This is the bourbon rye mixture. Uh, it comes in at 90, what, 90 proof? Yeah, 90 proof. It's really, really delicious. It's light, it's floral. You get these delicious light floral woodsy notes from the rye, but the bourbon kind of brings in that sweet caramel. It's tremendous. I would just, I would just love to have this one in the collection. This is 13th Colonies Southern Bourbon. Coming in at 94 proof, I think, am I right? No, 95 proof, 95 proof, it's absolutely delicious. It's got delicious like uh, apricot and, and a little bit of berry and some nice caramel notes. It's just really a great sip in whiskey. And I would, I would hate to be without it. Moving from there, we do go to my first sorta harder to find bottle and that's Eagle Rare. This is a standard Eagle Rare coming in at 90 proof. And frankly, it's just one that I love. I, I just love sipping on Eagle Rare. I, I think for, if you can get it for retail at 40, I think that's just a tremendous buy for a 10 year Buffalo Trace. It's awesome. I really, really like it. Now it's not the, the last Buffalo Trace you'll see, but it's the first. Now, next up is Barstown Bourbon Company, White Label. This thing is delicious. They just started making these uh, recently. Um, six year age stated, coming in at what, 96 proof. This is one that I would definitely, definitely wanna have on my list and keep stocked on my mini shelf, my small shelf. Uh, if you, whatever we're gonna call that tonight. I still can't decide what to call that concept. So maybe I should have figured that out before I started filming, but that's not how things roll here. 
supposedly they're going to start uh, making single barrels of these at some point, like cast strength ones. If that were to happen, then I would probably replace this with that because I think that would be such a better experience. Actually, I, I've experienced it because I've done the barrel thieving there and it was so much better than this. And this is awesome. So uh, I would definitely, definitely want to have that on my list. Next up is John J. Bowman from A. Smith Bowman here in Virginia, right down the road from me, coming in at 90, no, 100 proof. It is awesome. It is like a, an easier to find E.H. Taylor, uh, very similar to Rock Hill Farm as well. And I really, really like this thing. And this is one that I, I just, I'd want to keep on my shelf. Next up is the one and only 1792 a Bottled and Bond. It's the only 1792 that I regularly try to keep a, keep in stock these days. Uh, a lot of the other ones I just don't like that much. Uh, there's too much just kind of like variety between bottles. The, the, at least the uh, the picks, this the 1792 Bottled and Bond picks have been really good for me. And so I want to keep getting those and keep those stocked. And this one is a store pick, but that's just kind of how it would roll. Next up is Four Roses Small Batch, coming in at 104 proof. This is awesome. I really, really like this one. This is the only Four Roses on the list, unfortunately. I can only have 20 bottles, so there are some limitations as to what I could and couldn't keep stocked. And honestly, like that's something that sits on the shelf. A lot of these are shelf sitters so far, uh, except for the Eagle Rare. They all, most for the most part, you could get in most liquor stores, maybe not the store pick, but even then that's 1790 store picks are pretty easy to come by in many, many states. Old Forester, 1920. This is the best value in bourbon, in my opinion, coming in at 115 proof. This is one uh, that is just so rich, caramel sweet. Um, it's it's really well balanced with some great spices and obviously that proof points there that really just right in that sweet spot for me when it comes to you know a $60, $65 bottle. It's hard to beat a 1920. Everything that's really the yardstick for almost everything else. So uh, moving on to Russell's single barrel. This is actually a store pick, and I don't want the regular Russell single barrel. I want a store pick version of it. So this and the 1792 bottle and bond are store picks specifically. And I don't know that there are others specifically that are store picks. These might be the only store picks in the in the lineup tonight because they are somewhat harder to find. So I didn't want to, uh, you know, in this in this hypothetical situation, I would not want to uh, have to spend too much time driving between stores to get store picks or hopping on and, and figuring out how to get a hold of them from somebody else. Here is the first true rye of the night, and actually the only true rye of the night. Uh, we did have the uh, Lost Monarch from Weathered Empire that has, you know, it's a, a boo rye. This is awesome. This is Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof Rye. This one's coming in at 133.4 proof. Definitely, definitely is on my list. One of the best ryes, uh, I think, uh, dollar for dollar that you can get your hands on these days. Here we have Knob Creek 12. This is the 100 proof version, sells for about $75 here in Virginia. When you can find them in Virginia, it's actually not easy to find in Virginia. Uh, although I did get this one in Virginia, so I guess it's not impossible, but it is harder to find. The next one, in, and I'm using this bottle as an example, but it's not actually the one because this is would be a much harder version to find. Uh, this is a Rye 3, and this is a 16 year light whiskey from MGP, uh, and really, this is just representative that I would want to have a 15, 14, 15, 16 year old MGP light whiskey. And this is the one that I have right now that I just, I absolutely love this bottle. It's delicious. I got it down in Savannah at Broughton Street Liquor. And I would want to have something like this, whether it's from Rye 3 or from some other company. It's all about getting a hold of that 14, 15, 16 year old. Uh, light whiskey or the oldest possible light whiskey I can find. I don't know some of them are like 26 years. If I could get one of those, that would be freaking awesome. Murray Hill Club coming in at 103 proof. Yeah, 103 proof. This is really, really good. I think for a hundred dollar bottle, this actually gives you a pretty special experience. Actually, it's a little more than a hundred now, but overall, I think it's a great experience uh, for what it is. It's just rich, complex, well-balanced, and just something I would really, really enjoy and want to have. And it is a little bit harder to find, but it's not like a cigar blend, a Joseph Magnus cigar blend. So it's not crazy hard to find, but it's not the easiest either. I, I literally bought that one right there on the shelf, sitting on the shelf in Georgia, not allocated, not behind the counter, nothing special. So I know they're out there. Now, here we get into hopes and dreams and butterflies that maybe someday I'd be able to get a hold of these again. One is a stag. I want to keep a stag on the shelf from Buffalo Trace. This is the uh, batch 18, but 
I mean, it's a stack. I don't know what else to tell you. You know, if I had to pare down in the scenario to 20 bottles, I would want a stack. I, I like them. Now, I would want to get a good version of the stack. 18 is not, in my opinion, the best version, but it's actually a pretty darn good version of stack. So I wouldn't be mind. I uh, wouldn't mind keeping the 18 on my shelf. Then we have Michter's 10 year. This is a uh, this is one from 2023. So it's one of the new ones. It is absolutely delicious. I would want to keep something like this. Now, it might not be the 10-year bourbon. Uh, most years, I would actually prefer to get the 10-year rye. So if the 10-year bourbon was not well thought of that particular year, I'd grab the rye and be just as happy, and in some years, be much more happy. A Weller Full Proof. I love Weller Full Proof. I am... I, I, know, I know some people are hating on me for it. Coming in at 114 proof, this is just really sippable. It's really delicious. It's the only weeder on the table, I believe, tonight. And I don't regret that. I mean, it's just fantastic. And so I would want to try to figure out some way to keep Weller Foolproofs on the shelf in my house. Then E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof. This is still one of my absolute favorite bottles and uh, definitely in the top 10 bottles I've ever had. It's just, it really just, it sings to my palate. I don't know how else to describe it. I know for a lot of you, there are other things that probably sing to your palate, but this is one that sings to mine, and that would uh, be something I want to keep on the shelf in this scenario. And lastly, 13th Colony Double Oak. This is from the 23 version, and this is something that I would want to keep stocked in future years. Obviously, very hard to get a hold of, and it probably would be very hard to get a hold of in future years as well, but it's something that I would want to keep. So these are what I would pick if I were to have to pare down my collection to 20 bottles and have to try to restock them. This is what I, you know, the balance of, of easy to find bottles, hard to find bottles. I'm willing to put the effort in for these because I find value in those hard, harder to find ones. They're, they're worth it to me. So that's what, why they made my list. Thank you so much to Original Grain for sponsoring this episode. Please go to originalgrain.com slash row and get 30% off your timepiece for that loved one this holiday season. If you ended up enjoying this video, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And until next time, find a bottle you love.